Okay, so let's get right into it. Uh, so you guys have heard this take before. If you guys have watched my stream for a long time, you've heard this exact take. I apologize. I just want to get it into a video form so people stop asking about it, right? All right, so first of all, let's talk about motivation. And keep in mind, a lot of this is before Mythic Plus, but I'll get into why Mythic Plus hasn't really changed it for whatever reason. Why do you all like keep playing the game and farm after you've done progression? Or maybe your progression takes a long time. Like, why do you keep playing, right? Like every time you log on and do Shriekwing again and do Huntsman again and do Hungering again and all those fights, you never, like as a DPS player, you're at least thinking of like how to do... You, it can either be about logs, but even in private logs, by the way, like I wouldn't even make the log argument. Like, you at least want to do good damage so even the people around you in your guild recognize that you're doing what you're supposed to do. Or even, like, personal growth. Like, you want to get better. You want to do better. And it's noticeable. People see it. Everyone in your raid most likely has details or recount or scada or whatever. Like, they see what you're doing, right? All right, as a tank and as a healer, too, this is probably almost all of this is true with healers except for the recruitment aspect which we'll get to in a second that motivation is gone you can't fake it like yeah you can say like yeah you know next week i want to like optimize my cooldown usage and take as little damage as possible but it's like no one cares no one watches no one cares and then you can be the tank that's like i want to do a bunch of a bunch of good damage and like you know get good tank logs good t being doing good damage on the tank is very important it's very important, in, especially in high-end progression. So it's like, it's good if you're focusing on that as long as you're not dying. But a tank's end-all be-all is not being dead. And if you're doing progression now, I, as much as this sucks to say, like, because you should try to do as much damage as you can, but like, your damage as a tank doesn't matter at all. Like, anytime you're killing a boss this late, or even three weeks, four weeks after World First is over, your, your guild has the gear to kill whatever boss you're fighting. As long as you guys basically stay alive to the end, you're going to kill it. There's virtually no DPS checks. So the tank damage thing is just so much less important, and your and your guild acknowledges that. They're not going to flame you for your damage, most likely. So it ends up becoming this thing where all you have to do is stay alive. And staying alive on some fights as a tank is challenging. Like, Sired and Athreus on Mythic is definitely one of them. But on a lot of fights, it's not very challenging. And so you become complacent. That's the main thing. I think that's why tanks don't get a lot better. This Again, this is an argument before Mythic Plus, and we'll get into Mythic Plus in a second. It, it just breeds complacency because the bare minimum of what's required you can get by with for a long period of time where that's not true with DPS. Like as a DPS player, I promise you, I've done it. Players in my guild have done it. And every single time I talk to them about it, they're like, dude, I'm a totally different player when I play DPS and farm because I want to maximize all my characters every week and I want to have five characters ready for raids. But as a tank, it's like, yeah, you can have five characters ready for raids. I myself have had all six of my tanks full clearing mythic in a farm period. But my like actual drive to like do as much as I can on them as if I were a DPS, it's just totally different. And because of that, over long periods of time, I think most players who tank and only tank, it just breeds a level of complacency that really stunts you from growing. And then comes the recruiting argument, okay? So when you have a lot of guilds are comfortable with what they have. They find two tanks and they don't even look at their damage. They just find two tanks who die an okay amount for their guild and that's fine, and they don't replace them. It's extremely taboo to recruit a new tank, to recruit a third tank to like trial for one of the tank spots. Every other role goes through that. Healers have six healers, fifth healers who are like recruited to kind of go for those top four spots. This this raid had a little bit more five healing than normal. In most raids, five healers are almost permanent bench, and they're they're basically trialing for a top four spot potentially, right? That's never true with tanks. It'd be weird. If you recruited a third tank, guaranteed one or two of those tanks is leaving the guild in two weeks. And, and and honestly, I think that would be a better system. I think tanks would be better because of that. But there's never that sense of like, I need to play better because I might lose my spot. If you know a guild's comfortable with you, you kind of lose your drive to get better, right? So I, I think that's the main reason why you don't see a lot of tanks like going up into higher levels is because even if your guild should recruit a tank, you know, your, your tank might die two times a night three times a night and you raid like four or five hours you know and that's normal you're like you've accepted that maybe you just think it's sometimes normal for tanks to just die like that's a that happens you know even though at the highest level that's obviously not true and you can get better and better to achieve or become that and obviously every good player makes mistakes every now and then but like specifically like this raid sired and athreus uh at you know 215 eye level was like very rough especially for tanks and like learning it right like, before that, I don't know how many times either of our tanks died the entire raid. Like, 
in world first within that time with all those pulls like may maybe less than five times or at least any that i can recall and i pay pretty close attention to that because i used to do it right but then if you're raiding a guild where tanks die somewhat frequently it just becomes something that's part of the process and it's normal and your raid leaders usually don't recruit to replace them right well your tanks are good well i mean yeah I mean, it's not about that like there there are good there are good tanks who only tank it's just really rare and this is why it's rare because there's no normal progression path as a dps player if you're really good and you aspire to be in a better guild and especially if you play a meta class you can kind of keep getting better and climbing the ranks and going to better guilds and all of that that same path is not there for tanks or at least it didn't used to be now the big caveat in it now is the is the advent of mythic plus mythic plus is a scenario where your group kind of lives and dies by your tanks and if you guys do mythic plus at all you've probably become pretty aware that finding good tanks and that are consistent and want to play all the time is maybe one of the very hardest things in the entire game because again there's just not very many good good ones right especially a lot of the best tanks in the world don't even do mythic plus they don't find it fun uh so the ones who do you have to find someone who likes doing mythic plus is good enough and wants to play all the time and tanks right so but that i think that's the avenue for getting better though like if you really want to challenge yourself as a tank like as much as like you know like i said there's a lot of issues with why people don't do high keys a lot but doing high keys as a tank and doing as much as you can and doing mdi as a tank is really challenging that's that's a that's a way for you to get better because you're challenging yourself a lot of the times more than you can in raid scenarios but for whatever reason it hasn't translated into raid tanks you know still still a lot of the better tanks you know that have competed in dungeons and stuff are ones that have came from like a raiding background and it's usually not raid guild picks up really good mythic plus tank and it works out that's that's a lot rarer than the other way around right the the thing is is that i think getting better is is a thing for tanks and mythic plus but i don't think it's translated into guilds recruiting tanks a lot like that's actually one like aspect of prog guild progression that i think is viable for a lot of classes which is network with people and play with them a lot in Mythic Plus, and they're like, hey, this guy's good. I want to add him to our, our like, three night a week raid team or something. I think that happens. I just don't know how much that happens for tanks. Because, like I said, I think guilds become, because tanks are complacent in general, guilds become complacent about recruiting them. Or they take the first one that applies. Or they're, like, <laughs> the worst thing ever is they're recruiting tanks that are raid buffs because they need a raid buff, which is, like, restricting your pool of tanks by so much, you know? It's not, it's not a coincidence that, that tanks at the highest level so the two guilds, the two best guilds over the past three years, uh, Limit and Echo, right? The tanks for those guilds right now are now a DPS player gone tank, Mirez a DPS player gone tank, S Scott a DPS player gone tank, Darky a DPS player gone tank, formerly before this raid, me a DPS player gone tank. There's, there's a reason that all these guilds competing at the very highest level right now have not had players that have only tanked in their WoW career. And it's a lot to do with with this kind of system and the players that have have been replaced so so you're saying we should flame our tanks for bad dps to keep them motivated oh no 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 keep no 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 <laughs> that is that is the opposite of what i'm saying if you're having a tank player who is struggling and then on top of them already struggling you tell them that they should focus on their damage that guy is going to be dead every pull but also there's really like no such thing as focusing on your damage as a tank i've never felt that way like in almost every tank class, there's very little decisions you can make that are like full on damage where you're totally screwing your survivability. Yeah, like the video the other day, the built for DPS. That's that's not like really a thing. I guess in some scenarios, if you're like gemming crit because it's like very marginally better than your really good defensive mastery, but obviously crit is like crit for parry usually in dungeons usually averages out to be a pretty good reduction on most physical stuff but obviously in a raid i've always laughed at any theory crafter that ever tries to make the argument that classes like prot warriors and dks in the past their best defensive stat in a raid is actually crit because if you average out the parry percentage it's better on average than or not on average it's better over a long period of time than like haste or verse for actual reduction but then it's like that person's clearly never tanked a mythic raid boss where it kills you in three swings and if you're obviously not specced into something to negate that and you just don't parry you actually die it's just like a total it's like the biggest math argument versus like actually playing the game argument of all time usually theory crafting really struggles to do anything tank related um numbers wise specifically
Usually tanks that do good damage just, like press their buttons well. Like Brewmaster, when it was really good damage in Eternal Palace, was literally just looking at a log between two people and seeing how many times they casted Blackout Strike, Keg Smash, and like did an energy cap. And that was as much damage as you could ever do. Just and, and rushing Jade went up time, right? But like you can do all of that repeatedly. And that's exactly what you should do to stay alive as well. So it's not like uh you're making a decision to do one or the other. But but to more on your question though, you asked me should I tell my tank to do more damage and make him motivated. I'm not telling you to make your players motivated. And I'm also, as much as I'm kind of explaining all this, I'm not offering a solution. I don't have a solution. Because I've experienced it. I cared about the game and I tried to get better so much more when I was a DPS player. Because I logged in every day. How does anyone get good at this game? They're passionate about their playing it and they play it a lot and to where they understand the game and they learn how to deal with every situation to where when they reach it in the, in the future, either in a new dungeon or a raid they're seeing, They've already experienced it and they adapt accordingly, right? I'm just telling you that level of drive for almost everyone I've ever seen, once they start playing tank, that drive is less than they were before. So they kind of stop getting better. That's that's the problem. I don't have a solution. Because in reality, raids need to farm after progression is over. And raids and 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 tanks and healing and farm is always going to be boring. Obviously, you can go for logs, that's fine. Healers and tanks, go for any form of logs you can to push yourself and try to be as good as you can be. Obviously, that's great. I'm just telling you, from experience, the natural desire to do that when it's not as noticeable by your fellow raid members or, I guess, like logs that people actually care about, you just straight up don't have the same amount of drive. It's just true. Like I, I can guarantee you, a lot of you guys, I'll get, a ton of you guys don't tank, but almost everyone in here that tanks knows what I'm talking about. If you've ever swapped from tank to D DPS to tank or DPS to healer, you'll notice how different you feel about the game during farm. Progression is great. World first progression tanking, some of the some of the most rewarding experiences I've ever done. Uh, it's so rewarding, it's so hard tanking world first progression. Same with healing, arguably a lot of fights. Again, not every fight's the hardest for tank healers and DPS, it kind of varies. In fact, there, there's distinct fights in this raid where it's clearly harder for a certain role than others, right? And it kind of varies. But like, in, in farm, it's miserable, whereas DPS and farm is just continuing to be fun, which is why you see a lot of the better players in the game DPS, because at the end of the day, people play the game to have fun, right? Like, farm tanking just sucks. And it's really hard to get better at a game when you are not just feeling it. Anytime anyone gets better, man, you're just like, you're logging on the game with like a goal and you want to have fun and it's fine. I, I think it's just really rare. It's like really rare. Now literally runs Torghast on another account during raid farm. I mean, yeah, like, like I said, but I guarantee you if now was a DPS player, like he has been in the past, like now, now DPS in our guild in Battle of the Zara Lore on a Demon Hunter. I guarantee you if he was a DPS player on farm, he would be farming on everything and that would never be a case. Yeah, that would never happen. He would actually be another good person to talk about with then, or about this with me. Same with Darky and Scott, because I feel like they've both, they've all gone through this, right? I got stuck tanking for my guild for the last two raids of BFA and I'm back to DPS for Nathria. And it's night and day how much more I'm enjoying raiding right now. Yeah, it's a fact. I mean, I guess it kind of works because if you look at raiding, if you look at Mythic Plus and PvP, the game needs a lot more DPS players than it needs healers and tanks. There's just the quantity of DPS and tanks, or the quantity of DPS required in every faction of this game is more than healers and tanks. So I guess it's fine that the game is like that. It would certainly be a lot weirder and a harder ecosystem to manage if it was like tanking was fun and everyone hated DPS, but you needed 16, 14 DPS in a raid, you know? Like, I guess it makes sense. But what it means is that finding good tanks and finding good healers is really, really hard to do because there are less good players playing them due to the fact that a lot of the times in farm, it's not nearly as fun. And the ones who do often quit. Do you think if they made tank damage bigger, aka Vengeance, then tanks would have more incentive to get better? Yes. Absolutely. Keep in mind, you saw a lot of really good players enjoy tanking and farm. A really good friend of mine, uh, Fragnance, in MOP, loved tanking his alt clears. Why? Because he could farm Vengeance and do crazy ass damage. There's no scenario where you'll find that guy tanking right now, <laughs> unless he has to. You know what I mean? Like, that's like, more of the point, you know? Like, now, I will agree that Vengeance was a little out of control. Like, on basically every Mythic end boss, your tank topped DPS. I don't know how I feel about that. I think that's probably a little too far, but certainly making it more relevant and people caring about it more would certainly be better. 
The, but you guys also don't really understand why Vengeance was so good. Again, tanks meaning more as a damage as a damage source definitely mattered and was really cool. But a lot of people, when they hear tanks think fondly on mop, on mop, they think that they're talking about vengeance, like the offensive portion. When in reality, if you played back then, the defensive portion of vengeance is what made it so fun because you had absolute and complete control of your survivability and it had a high skill ceiling. And over time, they've kind of it's still there. So the, basically, they made Resolve and Wad, which was supposed to be what Vengeance was, but only for the defensive portion. But they massively, I mean, tanking and Wad was fine, but Vengeance defensively was way better than Resolve was. And then ever since then, they've kind of just taken away more of your like character or player agency as a tank, and they've kind of put it on other people. But it's still, again, I think it's still an excuse. Like, like I said, the Tanks still have control of their survivability. Like a good tank, in most scenarios, a good tank lives and a mediocre tank doesn't. And I hate saying that because I feel like that's food to, you know, complacent tanks who ever make the excuse. Like I can tell you guys of the times that our tanks have died in a raid, the amount of times that they would ever open their death. First of all, to open your death log means you don't know how you died, which is like, how do you not know how you die? I feel like anytime you die as a tank, you should know like 10 seconds, like five seconds beforehand. In most scenarios, like, oh, I'm in trouble right now call for an external or whatever but like if you if you ever die and there are externals up it's your fault you know don't open your death log and look at the amount of direct heals you've gotten over five seconds that's ridiculous that's not how raiding works and very 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 specific scenarios where nothing else is happening direct heals go into tanks but like 95 percent of fights you have a beacon you have a riptide you know you have an atonement and that's it and you live with that and you can uh, that's that's what's expected. You're not expected to get spammed. If you die, it's your fault as a tank almost every time. Now that that's keep in mind, that's in raids. That is not in Mythic Plus. I think I think an actual fair amount of your healing in a Mythic Plus scenario actually goes into your tank. But that, I'm not speaking about Mythic Plus at all. How does this apply to tank players looking to move up into higher ranking guilds? I love tanking and want to continue to improve. Okay, so now let's shift the conversation into what Linexus is asking, because like I said before, I'm kind of explaining a situation in WoW but I'm not really offering a way to fix it. Okay, I'm sorry about the ads. Okay, 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 I'll wait. People hear the statement, if a tank dies, it's their fault as like some damning thing, but I feel like that's just, the only reason that's controversial is if people are afraid of saying that they died because it was their fault. You know, as long as it happens in moderation and it makes sense, messing up's fine. I think maybe that's when you guys see a lot of tanks Small thought, but I think when a lot of tanks or people in general instantly try to displace blame when they die, usually it's because they obviously don't like something being their fault. They, they, they try everything for it not to be their fault. That's a very, very, very bad habit, very bad trait to have. Yeah, messing up's fine. I also think that's a lot of things that people understand about healers. Small side note is like you get to a fight for the first time and like your healing's kind of bad. It's literally the first time you've seen that part of the fight. And I've found myself doing this before where I'm like, oh, we need to move this around. We need to move this. We can't barrier this anymore. We have to barrier there. And I've had my healers tell me in the past and be like, dude, honestly, I think we just need another pull. And I'm just like, cool. Healing's like really complicated. It's like when you get to a new part of the fight, your healers have to see that and learn how to do it too. You know? So they like now that they've seen the damage patterns, they can prepare for it better. And like healing will get better over time, right? So you don't have to make too many massive changes. Uh, it's part of the fun about healing as well. I think tanking is a lot of the same way as well. Like a tank can see a new part of the fight and die to that and be like, yeah, sorry, I screwed up there, move on, and everyone's always fine with it. I would just urge everyone to always do that. You can get mad at yourself for wait, for making a mistake, that's fine. But if you're the guy who, in your mind, the first thing you're going to do is look at a death log and see what went wrong with the intention of saying that it wasn't you, like, I don't know if you need to hear this or who you need to hear it from, but you, you got to stop that shit right away. No one, No one likes playing with someone like that. What about rotating DPS slash tank players on reclears to keep it fresh for the players instead of having only two tanks? Okay, so I've had this same thing happen as well. I've always offered this to Twisted because Twisted is someone I think who can relate this to. So Twisted is someone who's played every role. Uh, right now he's ranged DPS for us. Last year he was healing. But until we found a healer recently, I told Twisted like, hey, do you want to like just to have more fun and farm? Because he was not having a lot of fun. I'm like, do you want to DPS some raids and heal some raids? Like basically half and half. And he was telling me how much that sucked. He was like, I know it's like hard to describe, but like 
I would rather just be doing one or the other. Even if I don't really want to be healing farm, I would rather not be half and half because like if you're not all the way DPSing, you're not going to give it your full effort. And then being a DPS player without giving it your full effort, you feel bad. And then if you're still healing, does that make sense? Like you can't like get into a groove of what you want to do. So I would actually not encourage you to do that. You said you were a you were a tank of mythic all the way up until now and now you have to DPS sludge fist. Yeah, imagine how bad that feels. Like imagine you tanking and like maybe you're like whatever with capping your covenant shit every week. Maybe you're behind a soulbind or something a couple weeks ago. And you know, you don't have like the best DPS gear and your raid leader's like, hey, why don't you DPS for this fight? You're like, huh, I mean, okay. And it's like, you don't want to be ever doing anything half-ass, you know? Like, it just feels bad.